RSA is not the only uh, public key encryption algorithm we have, uh, and uh, factorization problem is not the only problem that uh, we can uh, construct uh, encryption algorithms based on. So recall that this grid logarithm problem was, uh, was used by uh, Diffie and Hellman for key exchange, but they didn't propose any encryption algorithm. And uh, Algamal actually uh, used the same problem, the uh, discrete logarithm problem, uh, and introduced an encryption algorithm just by simply using it. So the algorithm is almost simple when we summarize it like this. So let's see. So in the key generation phase, we randomly choose an X, and this would be our secret key. Then we compute G to the X that equals to y. Of course, at this point, it depends which, uh, again, which uh, mathematical group you are using. If uh, this is, uh, in, if you focus on zp uh, or fp, let's say, the field that is generated by a prime number, which only includes the numbers starting from one to p minus one. So in that case, this would be y equals to g to the power x modulo p. But of course, um, this is not the only, uh, group that you can use. If you use elliptic curve cryptography, the, this would be a, a operation on the uh, group operation. And in elliptic curves, we have uh, different uh, operation for addition, actually, and I will actually uh, describe it uh, in a few minutes, let's say. So you compute this, you randomly choose X, and take, by using the group operation, you take a g to the x uh, and compute y and y is your public key so simply like this public key is y and private key is x so how the encryption and decryption works when somebody wants to send you a message they choose a random value r and send you g to the power r which is u and m times y to the power r which equals v so again uh, when uh, uh, the an attacker who listens to the communication would capture U and V, but since the discrete logarithm problem is hard, they won't be able to capture R from here. Uh, so, or M from here. So what you do next is as the person who wants to decrypt, you perform U to the power minus X. And since X is known to you, which is the secret key, you can compute the inverse of U. Uh, with respect to this value. So you just multiply V times U to the minus X, again in the group, so you will get the message back. And uh, you might see why this is the case. U to the minus X is actually G to the power minus XR, right? And if you multiply it with V, you just multiplying this value with a G to the power minus XR, and since y equals to this, they cancel each other because y to the power r is actually g to the power x times r. So when you uh, subtract xr from xr, you will get uh, g to the power zero, which is one. So you end up with m. So encryption and decryption is really simple and it all relies on the uh, security of the discrete logarithm problem. So if somebody can find that, fast way of uh, for calculating discrete logarithms, then they will be able to break any algorithm of communication. So that was it. Instead of RSA, you can also use algorithm, which relies on different uh, mathematical problems, let's say. But uh, now I want to move on to digital signature algorithm. This is not related in terms of the concept because algorithm was an encryption algorithm. Digital signature algorithm is, as the name implies, is used for uh, digitally signing any message. But uh, their security somewhat relates to the, uh, they look alike actually. They, again, this uh, standard uh, has security due to the discrete logarithm problem. So let's uh, see how the digital signature algorithm works. And actually, this solves the authentication problem uh, uh, because you can digitally sign and prove yourself in a message. So it starts like this. In the, initially, you have to choose some parameters. You choose a good hash function, H. Again, you should at least choose SHA-2 or SHA-3. 
using MD5 or SHA-1 would not work. Choose key lengths L and N. In this case, L is, uh, can be chosen as 3072 bits and N can be chosen as 256 bits. This would be, these numbers would be enough for you to get 128 bit security. So you choose an M bit prime Q. So it is 256 bits if you choose these parameters. Then you choose L bit prime modulus P such that P minus one is a multiple of Q. Choose G, its multiplicator group order uh, modulo P must be Q. So with these choices, your parameters becomes P, Q, and G. And you can share this information with anyone you want. So this is the, the parameters that, that you are going to use for uh, digital signature. Now you need to generate your keys. How you do is as follows. Randomly choose a secret key X and calculate the public key Y that equals to G to the power X modulo P. As you can see at this point, what you're simply doing is the algorithm of key generation. So how do we sign a document? Uh, let's see how we sign it and then verify it. Uh, the person who wants to sign the message randomly chooses K for the message that they want to uh, sign. So even if you sign the same message more than once, it is a good idea to choose a different uh, random value. You calculate G to the K modulo P modulo Q, and it, that would equal to R. Then you calculate the hash of your message. Again, uh, as we discuss a lot in the hash functions, uh, when you're signing a message a document or a file you don't sign the whole file for instance think about drivers for instance gpu drivers are now more than 500 megabytes signing such a, a file will take a lot of time so instead of putting m here we take the hm the hash of it so it would be if you are using sha 256 this would be just 256 bit value so we are going to sign the hash of it. This is why uh, the hash function should be uh, second premise resistant and premise resistant and also collision resistant so that uh, uh, provide security for the digital signature algorithm. So what you next, we, we calculated R, then we calculate S and it is calculated like this. You take the hash of your message and add to it X times R and multiply it with K to the minus one so inverse of K, in other words, then you take modulo Q and you obtain S. So in this case, the signing is complete. Your signature is R and S. So the person who wants to verify uh, does the following thing. They calculate the S inverse modulo Q and obtain W. Then uh, since you claim that you signed this message M, and this is your signature. They can also take the hash of it, then multiply with W modulo Q and obtain U1. Then uh, they compute R times W modulo Q and obtain U2. Then uh, they calculate G to the U1 times Y to the U2 modulo P and modulo Q, which will be equal to V. And at this point you are done. What you do is you check if V equals to R, okay? If it is, then you verify the signature because this would mean that only the person who has the secret information X can do these operations. And if it is not the equal to each other, then you will say that the signature is not valid. So verification fails. So it is as simple as that. You might uh, think that why uh, it works. So actually it is not that hard. Just think about what G to the U1 and Y to the U2 by looking at these definitions and you will realize that it is almost identical to what we are doing here but so i will leave it as an exercise to see why this works but as you can guess uh, only the person who has the secret information x can sign a, a message and everybody else knowing the public parameters can verify if the signature is correct or not <laughs>